What is up, people? Van from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel bringing you another video. Today's video is going to be a review of a game called Goblin Shard. Uh, this game, it came out a little bit ago. It's in demo right now, so if you want to go out to Steam, you can download the demo and play through it. It's a fairly short game. I think there are four maps total that you can go on, but they're procedurally generated, so if you actually keep going to them, you can replay them. Um, and they should be different than the first time. I don't know how many procedures they have. I don't know how many different versions of the maps they have. But at least that adds a little bit of content to it. But right now, because it's only in a demo phase, there's not a lot of playtime available. It's supposed to open up into a early access uh, state at the end of 2021 in December. And possibly into January 2022 because, you know, games are getting delayed. But at least... We'll get a more robust version of the game at that point. A lot of the, the cool stuff in the goblin layer that I think would be a lot of fun is currently locked because it's only in demo mode. So I'm really excited to have it go into early access so I can try out a lot of these features. So we can touch on those a little bit later, but we don't have a lot of information on them. So let's get into the game, how it works, the gameplay, etc. So first, what makes Goblin Shard different than any RPG turn-based that I have played is you actually are taking the game from the perspective of a goblin, which I find it quite interesting because every game I've ever played, you know, you're the adventurer, you kill goblins, you kill orcs, etc. So this is the first game I've played where I'm actually playing from the perspective of a goblin. And the way that it's done, the art style, um, the narration, it just... It really feels like I feel bad for the goblins, like I feel sorry for them. And so the game does a really good job of getting you into the into it and feeling like you're this poor goblin who's just trying to scavenge your food and grow your lair. And these evil human adventurers are preventing that. And so I really like how the game feels like it feels whimsical to me. And I, I've never used that word. I don't think ever in a sentence that was in real life <laughs> where I said things were whimsical. So it just it feels that way. Like I really am enjoying playing through the game because of the narration, because of the art style, etc. And then on top of that, the turn-based combat is actually a lot of fun. And so we'll get into that here in a second. So that's pretty much what the game is. Turn-based, it's you know, a leveling system, but your your creatures, your goblins do not level up, so to speak. They get stronger by getting them better gear. So they have different gear slots that they can use. And by replacing those gear slots with, you know, different color weapon, you know, similar to any other RPG, you have your, your common, your rare, your epic, your legendary, that kind of thing. So far, there's been common, uncommon, and rare. So gray, green, and blue. And so as you get your party members that level of gear, that's technically how they level up. I have yet to see their cards change on what abilities they have, but that could come in the future with different things with the goblin layer that I'm not too sure about because right now you can't level them up, so to speak, um, past a certain level. So I don't think you can give them better skills or, or better um, abilities at this point. So that should probably be coming in early access, I would I would assume. So in the demo right now, you have your basic classes and they have their basic card abilities and that's pretty much what you get. So currently when you start the game, you start with I believe two peons, I believe two raiders, no, a raider and a um, a tank. His name, I think they're called a guard. And so the guard, obviously, he's the sword and shield guy. The raiders are kind of like your damage dealers. And then the peons are kind of like the guys that they can do little things like they throw stones at people and they can, like, punch somebody for five damage. But really the peons is what you would think. They, they don't provide a lot of value um, in the beginning. And I'm assuming that as, the, as you would go on, you would convert all your peons to the different other classes, which is something you can do. Um, but you start the game with peons. I mean, their, their rock throw that stuns is actually pretty cool because combat in this game requires you to be a little strategic. And so maybe 
I'm not giving them as much credit as they are, as they deserve because that stun on the back row is actually quite helpful to prevent turns from being taken, which we'll get into here in a second. So with that being said, there are the classes that I know that exist in the game are peons, which we just talked about, raiders, um, they are guards, there are shamans, mystics, hunters, and there's one other one that I'm trying to think of, but I can't, I don't remember what it is. Um, so that's what you have from like a class standpoint. And each class has different cards that have different abilities. And so you can hold up to six goblins in your party at one time. And so you can kind of mix and match on what you think makes the most sense from a party standpoint in order to have the right abilities to, to take, take on certain combats. So right now, if you're, you know, on the video, I believe at this point I have my full group. I have a, I believe a shaman in the back. I got two peons, two raiders, and a guard up front. And you can swap the position of where they are, which is kind of important because when you're in a turn order and everyone takes a turn, you need to kind of put them in an order that makes the most sense. Uh, and it is interesting because if you have yours take certain turns where they're lined up against the enemy, they're going to take the hit. And if it's like your peon or your mystic or your shaman, I mean, you know, you don't want them to be the ones that are taking the hit. So that's what's really cool about the combat of this game is the strategy of it, right? When you first get into combat, it will tell you everyone's position on when it's their turn. But you can modify that by using different abilities to debuff the, the enemy. You can hit them with stones from the peons, which stun them. So it, it changes their turn order. Um, you can do like knockbacks with your guard character. He like hits them and knocks them back. You have different bleeds and debuffs on them. But what's really cool is, is there's some strategy to manipulating when the enemy is going to be attacking you. So you want him to attack the correct character. Like if your one character is wounded and almost dead, you wouldn't want the order to show up that that adventurer is going to smack your wounded goblin because he's most likely going to die. These, they do not have a ton of hit points and the game is designed similar to like an XCOM where you have multiple versions of your peons, of your, of your shamans and everything. So death in this game is a occurrence that will happen. You are going to lose your different guys in your party. Um, but what's cool is they actually incorporate that into the game where they then go in to provide some benefits to your layer through this ancestry, which comes in the goblin layer down the road. So when you get into the combat and you do the turn order, you also have buffs as, and heals as well. So like there's a haste ability that the shaman can cast and allow one of your stronger characters to take their turn more often. And so at face value, when you look at the combat, it's like, okay, it's very similar to a Slay the Spire where, you know, you have different abilities, the enemy has his abilities, and you try and kill the enemy using the card abilities that you have. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of strategy to it because you want to link, okay, is it his turn? Is it my turn? How do I do this so it makes sense? So as you progress through the levels you will run into several combats. There's also some harvesting and gathering in this game. It's not necessarily a crafting system, but there are things that you harvest, treasures, uh, different food staples, stuff like that, that then go towards, you have like a, a larder and all these things that you can store in your goblin lair. And then also some of that food you can heal your party with uh, during the campaign, during the mission. So there's not a lot of maps where there's an ability to heal your party outside of eating the food that you pick up and having um, a shaman in your party to heal you. So I feel like that's where the goblin lair comes in is as you gather these things, you can put them into your lair, then kind of store them so that you have them to use for different missions. Now, after you get through the map, it's a side-scrolling map, so you just basically hit your arrow key, you go to the side, you go to the next map, and it'll show you the percentage done on the map. So the goal is to 100% the map, get all the treasure, get all the food staples, kill all the creatures, and then at the end of certain maps, like the first one, you have a epic fight or a boss fight. So that's what I'm in right now is a boss fight with the innkeeper, and I will be honest with you, this guy and this fight, was not easy. Um, 
every time you kill his minions, he would summon more minions. So you have to manage them while trying to kill him. And he does some significant damage. And I was able to get through it pretty unscathed. I don't think anyone died in the combat. However, it took, I think, five minutes to do this just because of how things were moved. And again, I could probably be better at it. So I'm sure there's going to be people that watch this video and say, you know, you did terrible. I killed this guy in two seconds, and that's great. I'm not a professional video gamer, okay? This is just a review, and it took me about five minutes to beat this guy. So at the end of the combat, we won, we got our loot, and then you finally get to get into your goblin lair and really check out how your goblin lair looks and how it feels. And basically... The Goblin Lair is like your home base in any other game. It's like your hub city. And so that's where you're going to, you know, recruit more more uh, goblins. So there's an area where you can pick up more goblins. So far, the only goblins I've been able to pick up are peons. Uh, but after you pick up a peon, currently you have the ability to then convert a peon into the other classes. I think the only one I was able to convert to in the demo was the raider class. But at some point you may be able to pick up more or that's where I think the breeding comes in. So there is an area in your goblin layer where you can take two of your goblins of different classes and breed them to get an offspring. And so I think that's where some of these classes will actually come into play is by breeding the different goblins. So you can pick up a peon, you can convert a peon to a raider, and then once you do that, you can then take your raider and breed them with, say, the, the guard and then maybe come out with a different class. So, again, none of this is unlocked yet, so this is all speculation, but I have a feeling that's kind of how it works. And the same with the ancestry. As your goblins die in the different missions, then there's this ancestry that shows you all of the ones that died and then how that contributes to your goblin layer. And then in your goblin layer, each... Each one has their own room. You have the mystic, you have the hunter, and that's where you can do certain leveling up abilities for those different classes, which my assumption is there is no levels in this game. Like you're, There's no like level one, level two, level three, but I believe that in these areas, how you level up is by getting better gear and also by leveling up your, your class, whatever it is, to unlock different cards so you can have different abilities so you can kind of mix and match the different cards and swap out some of the abilities to be more customized and then with all of that you have your storage you got your breeding area you have your leveling up area you have your purchasing of of other peons and then lastly you have a merchant where you can go to and he has some pretty decent stuff that you can buy and he pretty much resets what he has available I've, I've seen him have new stuff every mission. And so every time you complete a mission, you come back, he should have something new to sell you. And there's some decent greens and blues in there. So I think it's it's kind of nice to have that ability to then level up your creatures and, and, and give them these blues and greens through a merchant versus having to find them by doing the missions over and over again. So the missions are... It is a procedurally general map, so generated map, so you can keep running the missions over and over again, keep getting different loot. Again, I don't know how many different versions there are of them. So far in the demo, there's only one region of the map unlocked, and on that region there are four quests or four areas that you can repeat, but I believe there are two other regions that haven't even unlocked yet. So all said and done, if you unlock the Goblin Lair, you unlock the other regions and you play it for a good amount of time, you could probably get at this point maybe 20 hours out of this game before you probably have maxed it out. Uh, that's all an assumption because a lot of the things are locked. Well, I'll, I'll find out more when, it, when we get into the early access. So that is my review of the Goblin Shard video game here. I, like I said... It's very fun to play. I would recommend giving it a try if you like strategy turn-based RPGs or just card RPGs like Slay the Spire, Hearthstone, anything like that. 
Uh, I really think that you will be pleasantly surprised on how fun this game actually is. And I'm very excited and looking forward to the early access coming, you know, December 2021 or January 2022, whenever it does come, because I want to dive in more and play this even more. And when it does come out, I will do an update video on some of the other stuff. And hopefully you guys will watch this and you'll want to play the game. So this is Van from the Vanverse Gaming Channel. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments or feedback below. I'm, I'm happy to be doing videos again. It's taken me a while, but this, this is something I enjoy, and I finally have the ability to come back and do it. So thank you all. Cheers, and we'll see you later.